Hello guys, how are you doing today? This is going to be the first in a series of guides focused around playing Spy and Highlander, which I intend to make. Today, we're just going to be talking about the guns. I'm going to cover each separate section about the class in you know, slightly shorter videos, so it'll be much easier to access the information should you need it. And also, just as a preface, this is going to be heavily biased towards me because I'm a European spy. So in our kind of play styles, the current, the current meta in Highlander is only like the top like 10% of teams, like the really, really best ones, are actually carried by their snipers. Uh, whereas I think in North America, there's a lot more sniper-oriented teams. Whereas then you'll find in Europe, like, I don't know, 70-80% of teams are carried by, like, their demo or another member of their combo. So this will all be focused very much from my point of view as a spy who's played in Euro, you know, Euro Highlander for the last, like, you know, two, three years, however long. Let's start with the guns. I like to categorise them as damage and utility. You've got the Ambassador and the Revolver for damage, and the J for utility. I tend to ignore the Diamondback and Enforcer because most leagues ban them, and besides, I prefer the Ambi for crits on demand. First up, the Revolver. The Revolver's really good on maps with close range combat because you can consistently hit meat shots with it quite easily compared to the Ambassador and take down any class in about 3 or 4 shots. I consider it viable on every map in every situation, especially Viaduct. I think on Viaduct you should run it 100% of the time. If Even if you really need that one pick of the L'Etranger, just run the Revolver on the map. It's so good. It's close range enough that you'll always hit about 30 to 50 damage depending on where you are, which means that like if you're working with your team, you can easily just kind of get picks off of people. I've had matches where I've done like, relatively low damage, but I've had loads of frags, purely because like my sniper and my demo have done so much damage to them, because it's such a small map, it allows you to really easily just kind of clean up kills with it, which is why I like the revolver and stuff like that. If you can hit consistent shots with it, I wouldn't worry about too much using the ambi. There's plenty of spies in high NA plat and ETF-12 prem, you know, you've got, you got Hard, and you've got Grenger Bob, and you've got Kazool and that lot. They're all very good with the revolver, and they've managed to make it work throughout however many seasons they've played in. So don't consider the ambi the be or end all. If you can use the revolver, fucking just do it. It's a good gun. It's very good. Do you remember that it does 21 damage minimum? This is a number you might want to keep stuck in your head, because if, especially on maps like Viaduct, you'll see people constantly going for health packs due to there's only the fact there's like about two on each side of the map. So you will often see people on like 18, 19 health range to a pack. Those are the people that you can pick off at any range, no matter, you can be on the other side of fucking Swiftwater and you can kill those people. And um, regardless, the actual size of the kind of bullet spread on it isn't that big. So sometimes if you do see someone running away and you kind of have like, you know, five seconds to shoot at them, you can just hold down your mouse one and there's a decent chance that you'll hit them. Especially if you wait, I think it's about a second or if you after you've reloaded, one shot will be 100% accurate. So if you can just wait a bit and then shoot that perfectly accurate shot, you can kind of pick off anyone at any range with it, which I think is really good. Now onto the ambi. If you can aim it consistently, you've got a really fucking good skill. There's only a couple of spies in European uh, Platinum and European Prem that can actually aim it like like fucking 100% headshot kind of range. You've got, you know, you've got Toast and you've got Inso and that lot. They're all really fucking good with it. Not everyone's like that. Some people are, but not everyone's like that. But that doesn't mean it's useless. I think it's like a pretty perfect side grade to it. You kind of take away the consistent meat shot damage that you can do with a revolver for inconsistent but skilled slash luck headshots with it, which allow you to take off single targets really well. If you see that sniper on, I don't know, Gully Wash, he's kind of hiding on top of the point and he's almost alone, they tend to be pretty easy to headshot. They're kind of standing still, not really paying attention, or they're watching a different doorway. That's when the ambi's really good, because you don't have to be fucking in so to hit a sniper standing still. The only time where it gets kind of difficult is if, like, you've just whiffed your stab and there's a medic running at you with his uber saw out. You've got a chance you can headshot him and body shot him. There's, you might kill him. If you don't, then you've left a medic on two health and you've just given him 25% 50 uber. And your other alternative is just a suicide. Whereas if you have the revolver, it's much, much easier just to hit three body shots on the medic. So you do have to keep that in mind when you're picking your weapons. If you intend to kind of stick at the long range, like if you're playing on swift water or gravel pit, the ambi's really good because you don't have to worry about those kinds of situations. If you have time to shoot, the ambi's very good. So whereas the revolver's very good in all situations, you know, you, you can use it at long range to spam at people, you can use it at close range to just flick shot people. The ambi you need to wait about just under a second to actually get the headshots back um, and if you don't wait you'll only do like 40 damage on body shot which while it isn't insignificant almost every other class in the game can do way more damage than that so if you're fighting a scout or someone if you're in close range you're basically fucked most of the time whereas with a revolver it's much easier just to like three shot them so do keep that in mind when you're picking the ambi it's very good again for single players 
And it's also very good if you're just fucking really good at aiming. You can get good at aiming with it. I think Polar told me, another good Prems buy, uh, he said that all he did, or what mostly all he did to get good with the Ambi, was just to play 24-7 Bad Water and Upward. He just kind of went on there, played pubs for like, I don't know, half an hour, an hour or two, and just did that all day for a while, and he just got really good with it. So that's something you can keep in mind. It's really fun to practice with as well. I'd also recommend running the Ambi. It's very good with all of the Watchers, in my opinion. Especially the Cloak and Dagger, because sometimes it allows you to kind of hide on, you know, like, upward first defense, where the sniper likes to go on top of the house. You can kind of hide with a Cloak and Dagger, giving comms, and then once everyone else has moved forwards, you can pick off the sniper quite easily. It's good with that. But I think the Ambi is really good with the Dead Ringer, which I'll talk about in a future video, but that's kind of the generic gun spy loadout. The final choice, the L'Echanger, is just kind of good whenever, really. You should hopefully be able to guarantee yourself at least one pick of life with stabs, and the L'Echanger is just a tool to make that a bit easier. I'd honestly only run it if you're having a bad aim day with both the revolver and the ambi, but it's pretty good if your team needs you to get into position for a sap or something. Uh, stuff like bad water offense first, you know, you're on blue team, they've put a sentry up on cliff, and your demo and your soldier wants to bomb. What you can do is you can have your soldier whip you out of spawn, and you can cloak and dagger letter on J. You'll have about, oh, I can't remember the exact timing, but it's about nine seconds, just under it. And you'll be able, you'll, that's enough time to run up to just around the sentry, by which time, you know, your combo will have jumped, and that'll give you enough time to go and coordinate a sap with them. Stuff like coordination is what the letter on J is really, really helpful with. So, as I said, bad water first. It's also very good for when you're waiting in front of a sentry you want to drop down. If you want to get into that position fast, that's what the Letron J is really good for. Um, with it, you can actually get past any sightline in the game. So including like, you know, Swift Water third, you can actually just run past fucking everything using the Letron J. I would not recommend using it with the Dead Ringer, however, because as I said, I think it's really good with a knife. It makes, it enhances your ability to stab shit, but it kind of pulls away from your ability to shoot shit which is what I don't like. While it, the damage down may not seem that much, I've had so many situations where I've died to stuff, which has been on like you know, 10-5 health or something, where if I'd just been using the stock revolver they would have died. Uh, a really good example was my upward official a couple of, um, like last week, a couple of weeks ago, where um, I was shooting Juju and I shot him like three times with it, which he would have died with if I'd used the stock revolver, but since he was left on a tiny bit of health, he had the ability to turn around and headshot me. You know, those four shots, that's plenty of time for pretty much any really good sniper to shoot you with. So it's something to keep in mind when you're running the letter on J. Use it for stabbing shit. If you want to shoot shit, like if their sniper's doing really well, I really wouldn't recommend using the letter on J. Because you need to take down the sniper. He's sometimes a bigger pick than the medic. Um, which is when you'll want to either run the revolver and just kind of shoot the shit out of him. Or be a massive pussy and run at the, you know, run at the back of the map and shoot him from a weird angle with the ambi. So overall, again, if you're just generally roaming around, I recommend either using the Revolver or the Ambassador based on your preferred playstyle. If you like to be a little bit more passive, the Ambi's very good. If you like to be kind of uh, ready for any situation, the Revolver's really good. All of the, um, both of those guns are viable with all the watches. You know, the, you've got the Invis Watch and you've got the Cloak and Dagger and the Dead Ringer. They're all good with the Ambi and the Revolver. The L'Etranger is good if your aim's a little bit off and you want to contribute still. It's also very good for giving comms, and it's good, very good for timing, but I wouldn't run it 24-7, and I would not run the Letteranger with the Dead Ringer, because as I've said, the Dead Ringer is very good for gun spy loadouts, and the Letteranger is very good for stabbing shit. It really comes down to, the longer you play, the better you get to making choices. Eventually, you'll just kind of pick one or the other. So you've got Toast, who I think never, almost never runs the Revolver. He just runs the Ambi 24-7, because he's that good with it. Whereas I'm kind of like... I have my good days and my bad days, and most of the time now I just kind of run the revolver due to how consistent it is. It's much easier just to kind of hop into TF2 after, you know, a day of college or whatever, and just shoot shit with the revolver, than it is to kind of have to warm up my wrist and, you know, practice hitting heads with the ambi, you know. Um, so it's just something that you'll want to get used to. If you kind of, you're in a situation you don't know what to run, just run stock. Stock's fine, does damage. It's perfectly viable. I think that will cover it for the gun section of the video though. Do feel free to ask any questions in the description or anything like that and I'll try to answer them. The next video will hopefully be covering the knives and as I said I'll try and keep these kind of sh these videos relatively short and very very kind of categorized. So this will be the gun video, this will be the knife video, then the watches video and all that kind of thing. So make sure to stick around if you want to see those and I'll see you all next time. Have a good day.